Good morning and a warm welcome from the London New River Circuit of the Methodist Church here in the UK. Now, wherever you are, we are glad that you are able to join with us in worship and trust that this online service will be a source of inspiration and blessing to you and indeed to all of us. Today is Trinity Sunday, the first Sunday after Pentecost. We celebrate the triune God, that is God the Father, Great Creator, God the Son, our Redeemer, and God the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. A doctrine which plays a central part in our Christian teaching as we have come to believe and experience the revelations of God. Now please join with me in the call to worship responses. We are the people of God, the Creator, made in the image of God. We are the people of God, the Redeemer, reconciled in Jesus Christ. We are the people of God, the Sustainer, upheld by the Spirit of God. Praise to you, Creator God. You are just and kind in all your doings. You watch, watch over, over us in love and, and hear the, the desperate cries of those who call to you. Praise to you, Jesus Christ. You, you entrust to us your ministry of mercy and love. Praise to you, O Holy Spirit. You wrap your unseen arms around us. Praise to you, Triune God, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Awaken our song of awe and praise. Now we sing now our first hymn of praise.
Let us pray. Now for our prayers of thanksgiving, let us approach God's throne of grace. I invite you to bow your heads reverently with me as we make our prayers to Almighty God. Let us pray. Into your presence we come, not because of any good that we have done, but by your grace and your grace alone. Living God, we bring you our worship once again. We come with joy and thanksgiving. We praise you. We acknowledge you to be our Lord. We bless and praise you for your life-giving, changing, world-shaping, earth-shattering power, through which you continue to work so wonderfully, despite everything that seems to undermine and deny your loving purposes. Lord of all, we praise you. Father God, we marvel at your hand in creation, sustaining the universe. We marvel at your hand in our lives and the ways in which you call before we even knew you. And the ways in which you continue to prompt us. Teach us, guide us, encourage us, and bless us. We marvel at your hand in our daily experiences. The experiences that we have from time to time of your transforming grace. Lord of all, we praise you. Almighty God, as we come to worship you, especially today we remember with awe and wonder that you came through your spirit and life was never the same. On this Trinity Sunday, O oh God, we pray that you would come to us. Come to us anew. Breathe new life into our hearts. New energy into our lives. New life into our souls. Transform our fears, our anxiety, our doubts. Fill us with confidence and faith. Open our minds to new horizons, new experiences, and a new way of looking at life so that we may live by the Spirit, your Holy Spirit, breathing rich fruit to your glory. Father God, as we sing your praises today, as we listen to the words of Scripture, as we fellowship together in this way, O oh God, we pray that that transforming spirit will be with us, will be in us to revive our hearts and our lives. I pray, O oh God, that the unity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will continue to be ours in our hearts and in our life's experiences as we seek to worship you this day and forever. Help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to worship you in spirit and in truth. Into your hands we commend ourselves and our worship. It's not about us. It is about you. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. And now for we share together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us as we said the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us read Psalm 8. The glory of the Lord in creation. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all will see How great How great is our God
Second Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 to 13. Final greetings and benediction. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Paul invites the Corinthians at the end of this second letter to agree with one another and live at peace. And as Christians, we agree that racism is a sin and we seek to live in peace because we are all children of the one God. Here in the New River Circuit, nine churches, around 1,100 members, and over 90% of the Methodists in our churches are from the BAME community. And this week, we have together shared that pain, that pain that we have seen come from the United States of America and as protest and support marches have then come here in Britain. Black Lives Matter. Gracious God, we come now before you to confess. To confess that we have not always agreed with one another. To confess that we have not always lived at peace. We confess the terrible sight this week of such a form of racism that it brought murder. We confess racism in our own nations we confess racism within our own church and we ask O oh God that you would forgive us we affirm that racism is a sin we affirm O oh God that you call us to value every life and in our confession O oh God we ask that you would forgive us you would forgive us individually you would forgive us as a church. You would forgive us as a nation. Wherever one human being seeks to dominate or be superior to another. Lord have mercy. As we come before the cross of Christ. 
and at the foot of the cross the ground is level and all are equal and may we as your people seek justice equality and freedom for all Lord have mercy Christ have mercy Lord have mercy in the name of Christ our Lord Amen the gospel reading is from st. Matthew's gospel chapter 28 verses 16 to 20 now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them when they saw him they worshipped him but some doubted and Jesus came and said to them all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the gospel said to go out into all the world and it is to praise and worship our God. And Sam will lead us in a time of praise and worship. We want to see Jesus lifted high, the banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know he is the way to heaven. See Jesus lifted high, the banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We wanna see, we wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see Jesus lifted step step. Step by step, we're moving forward, little by little, we're taking ground. Every breath of battle, weapon, strongholds come, tumbling down and down and down and down and down. And down. We want to see Jesus lifted high, the banner that flies across this land, that all men might see. Good. One more time. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Oh, 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 oh. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you. To see you high and lifted up. Woo. Come on. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. We sing holy, holy. Say my reading. 
my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, the Redeemer. Jesus is God's own Son. Precious Lamb of God, the Messiah, He is the Holy One, Holy One, Holy One. So we say thank you, Almighty Father, forgive Believe in your spirit till the work on earth is done. Good morning, church, and it's great to be with you all this morning as I share with you today's message on Trinity Sunday. The Trinity can be a difficult subject and one that sometimes preachers can avoid. So here I am a young minister out of college giving you today's message on Trinity Sunday. And when we look at the Trinity, paintings can help us to paint a picture and to explore what the Trinity may be like. And we're going to look at a painting now. This painting is called The Trinity by Russian medieval painter Andrea Rublev who portrays the three angels who visited Abraham and Sarah in Genesis 18. However, if you look closely, you will see the Holy Trinity due to its emphasis of peace, harmony and unity. But I want to suggest that there is an easier way that we can look at the Trinity and that's the three stripes. And you will recognise this logo. It's the Adidas logo. And in 1972, the sportswear company Adidas adopted a logo with a trefoil and three horizontal stripes. The trefoil represents three landmasses, the Americas, Europe, Africa and Asia. And the stripes are intended to come there diversity, all people in all places, all people in all places. And this is like the Trinity, all together in one place, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, three in one. You would have heard the well-known saying that two is company and three is a crowd. And I want to challenge this saying and suggest that the Trinity, with the Trinity, three is company. Today's passage is the Great Commission, which can help us explore of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit as the Trinity. Jesus has summoned his disciples to the mountain in Galilee. He tells them that all authority is his and that they could make disciples of all over the world, baptising and teaching them to obey his commands. He promises to be with them always. The Trinitarian formula of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit has become very, a familiar part of our ritual, but in this context, is surely saying something both universal and inclusive. That the whole of God is for the whole of the world. And that love of God 
is needed more so today. Equally, Jesus commands his disciples to pass on everything that he has taught them. The mission passes into their hands and is into ours. Jesus passes the baton onto his disciples. And the disciples were young. They were certainly young, between the ages of 15 and 18 years old. We've just got to go back to what the Bible says and their cultural background. In the time of Jesus, Jewish men married after the age of 18 years old. Uh, and Peter is the only one known to have been married. Because if we look at Matthew 8, then it mentions that Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law. The disciples were teenagers and Jesus was only young himself in his 30s. The disciples were Jesus's youth group. So there's no reason why in this passage of the Great Commission that some doubted. They probably doubted because they've seen so much. They probably doubted because they're still a young age. Yet Jesus still commissioned them to make disciples of all nations. It is comforting to know that Jesus can work with the unfinished article. The baton that Jesus, he passes it on to the disciples and the disciples pass that baton on to other people, sharing the good word with all the people around the world. And now that baton is passed on to us. Go and baptize and make disciples of all nations. In short, tell people about Jesus. Amen. Tell people about Jesus. All nations, which Jesus says, means people of all races, colours, cultures, status, ability and more. It means all people without the barriers and differences that humans have created for themselves. Christianity, here's the good news, Christianity, Jesus Christ is for everyone. Amen. That Jesus Christ is for everyone. There is no little doubt that some Christians feel uncomfortable with the idea of sharing their faith. But sharing our faith is more needed so today. And if we don't step out, how will people know or do we expect people to come to us? The lockdown has allowed us to do things differently. Our services are online and more people are reaching out. We're reaching out to more people online. But my message is we can't go back to normal or go back to old habits when our buildings are reopened. We need to remind ourselves of the command that Jesus gives his disciples to go. The community which we belong to now will come to us after this lockdown, will come to us wanting to know more about love, acceptance, and they will want help in resources, in food and other charity giving. And you and I are the ones who are able to help. I just wonder over the last 40 years that the Christian church has become too static because we expect people to come to us on a Sunday and we've forgotten to go. One of the things that the lockdown has challenged us is to do things differently. It's challenged all the ministers to do things differently. I thought I was good with ICT. I'm certainly learning more so now than I, I've ever done before. And as a church, we're doing things differently and reaching out to people. 
and there's been some great news stories that every day during the week more people have joined us for morning prayer. Our services are reaching out to over 500 people and people are becoming evangelists by sharing the services on Facebook and YouTube. People are hearing the good news of Jesus, of all nations, of people, of all races and colours and cultures. Ability and more are hearing the good news of Jesus. I think that our churches need to be more like petrol stations. We gather to know more of God's love and forgiveness. We gather to know and live out Jesus' teaching. And when we've gathered, our tanks are filled with the Holy Spirit to be ready to go. And then next week we do the same again. To be able to go, we need to come to Jesus and be open to the Holy Spirit. And maybe you're listening to this message and thinking, this is the first time, or it's only been a few months. Then let me encourage you to be open to Jesus. But it's a message that we all need to hear of that great commission of Jesus giving those words to those young disciples to go and the comforting words at the end that he is with us always. Are you excited about what the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit can do with us? If so, what are you waiting for? You've heard the man, go and make disciples of all nations. Amen. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am.
Let us pray. O oh God, on this Trinity Sunday, we have come before you to offer our intercessory prayers. You are God, the creator, giving us richly all things for our life. Through Christ, you are the savior of the world, made flesh to set us free. You are the spirit of the truth and love, willing to dwell in us, one God, eternal trinity. Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world, for those that are doing well, and for those that are searching for a sense of direction. This morning, even though we have closed the doors of our named churches, we, your faithful people, gladly acknowledge all the gifts you have given us to enable us to continue our worship and offer help to each other. Help us, God, to use our resources generously among our needy neighbours. We remember this morning those who are sick, sad or lonely, and live in fear for COVID-19. We pray that all may be aware of your comforting presence and know that in your hands they are safe and loved. We pray for all whose life is saddened by the death of loved ones. Be with them in, your, in their darkness and sadness. And let them know that Jesus Christ, being the light of the world, can comfort and sustain them. Lord Jesus Christ, you bridge across the ethnic boundaries between Samaritan Roman and Jew. You offered fresh sight to the blind and freedom to the oppressed. Today, Father, help us to break down the barriers in our community. Enable us to see the reality of racism and bigotry. Free us to challenge and uproot all forms of prejudice we hold. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, creator of one human race, forgive our blindness that causes our eyes to notice and magnify those things we regard as different from ourselves in others. Help us to put aside the dividing spirit embedded within us and to see within every person the image of yourself, a child of God. Lord, we pray for peace in the world. Create in us a love for peace. Give us the peace that is not absent from struggle, but the peace that overpowers injustice and bring the whole community to live in peace and harmony. Father God, we ask you to lead us into the coming week. 
Help us to believe that you are close to us. Guide us, Lord, to walk with your love, your peace, and your joy. Amen. Thank you, Sam, for leading us in those prayers of intercession. And as this is the first Sunday and most of our churches would normally have communion, so we are going to share again our love feast. We did so last Sunday for Pentecost, and I hope that you've remembered to have something to drink and some, some food to share. And over the next couple of minutes to know that we are sharing together, that as Christians, not only here in Britain, but around the world, we are seeking to agree together and we're seeking to live in peace. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that we can once again share in this agape, this feast of your love. And maybe we're by ourselves or in a family, but as we eat and drink, as we look at the images and as we listen to music, we thank you that we are united in your love, for we are all your children. And we affirm, O oh God, that we seek your kingdom, your way of peace. So bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. daily growth receive, more in Jesus Christ believe. Love like death has all destroyed, rendered our distinctions void, names and sects and parties fall, thou, O Christ, art all in all. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your presence, your inspiration and guidance in our service today. We thank you for calling us into the company of those who trust in Christ and seek to do his will. Build us up, O oh Father, into the fellowship of freedom that starts in each family and reaches out to the people next door. 
that starts in our own community and congregation and reaches to the communities and congregations everywhere, that starts in our own nation and reaches beyond national pride to the nations of the world, that starts with our own color and rejoices to claim as brothers and sisters, women and men, young and old, of every race, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. service today. Do please join us again next Sunday. Please join with me for the benediction. May the grace of the Father be with us. May the love of the Son enfold us. And may the peace of the Spirit of God comfort us today and always. Amen. <laughs>